The Norwegian legend diver, believe it or not, is 13 years old. When it was first released in 2007, it had no date display, but also was at the very start of the trend for vintage-inspired watches. Its design, as has been noted by a number of videos and articles, is derived from a Longin of the early 1960s, which used a picoret developed super compressor case, and thus was able to have an internal rotating bezel as seen on this legend diver. Despite its age, this model has been rejuvenated with a new movement and bracelet option in addition to a whole new size. Even so, today I have to ask the question of whether this watch is still the phenomenal vintage dive watch it used to be. This takes the video in three different directions. A look at what this watch has become, how it deals with its origins, and how it compares to some of the best currently on the market. To give you an introductory taste, this watch is far from perfect, but like a Lancia or an Alfa Romeo, it's still absolutely wonderful. Before I begin this video, remember to like, share and subscribe to watch more videos and follow us on Instagram to catch all the latest from Watch Chronicler. Also head over to watchchronicler.com to see full articles about all the best parts of the watch world and new releases. Today's Legend Diver is rather a different animal than what it was when first released in 2007. Back then this watch had no date, an ETA 2824-2 movement, and stood alone on the market as a vintage-inspired offering. In many ways it showed the way forward for Longines as a brand. Today it sits amongst the ranks of a very overpopulated vintage sector, and has increased significantly in price in a similar way to its sister brand, Omega. Even so, its proportions have remained the same with a 42mm diameter, a 14mm thickness, and a 52mm lug-to-lug length. As a result, it's no small watch, yet any enthusiast of smaller dive watches must remember that the original watch shared these dimensions too. To get the fit out of the way first, this watch fits my 7-inch wrist very comfortably thanks to curved lugs. In many ways I suspect that lovers of pilot's watches will take to this watch much more readily than dive watch lovers on account of the large dial area and thin bezel. The 14mm thickness though is a red herring. Due to the domed case back and immensely thick and domed crystal, you only actually notice the slim mid case. Speaking of the crystal, we're furnished with possibly the most beautiful box dome sapphire crystal in existence, which is also anti-reflective internally. Even Panerai, frankly, can eat its heart out on this one. Of course, this crystal is designed to emulate the original, something also achieved by the case back, which, in stunning domed steel, with a spear diver in the middle, it's the best facsimile of its original counterpart I've seen. Even the font is just right. However, some things have changed aside from the addition of a date in 2009, which in 2012 became the only option. Most notably, unlike the watch from the 60s, it now has asymmetrical crown positions, though, like the rest of this polished watch, they're stunningly made in 316L stainless steel. To understand this rather funny twin crown arrangement, you have to look at the watch which inspired it. As shown by its hashed crowns, this watch remained watertight through seals which tightened under pressure in the crowns and the case back. Technology like this was widespread, and even featured in early versions of Omega's Seamaster 300, and allowed crown-operated bezels to be made, which were useful in a time when ratcheting bezels weren't that widespread. However, the big one issue with this design was that it didn't, in truth, really work. You see, under high pressure at great depth, this concept was sensational. At shallow depth, though, it tended to allow some water ingress. And so, as a consequence, since its release in 2007, the Legend Divers had two screw-down crowns. The action of both is absolutely exemplary and guarantees water resistance to 300 meters. This though leaves us with a serious catch-22. As a consequence of being screwed, you can't adjust the bidirectional bezel anywhere near water, let alone underwater, and having to unscrew the crown before timing something encouraged me to leave it alone 9 times out of 10. Following a similar story, the dial is a stunning recreation of the original, with a glossy black base and a cambered bezel with the same rich, inky finish. It really is a beauty and the quality of printing is similarly exemplary. Likewise, the details are very well done, as seen on the black date wheel and the immaculate logo, as well as the hands which have a level of polish which screams quality. Just as a side note, the watch which I have here is, as far as I can tell, at least five years old, as the logo on newer versions is slightly thinner. Even on the face, though, we see the same sort of almost perfect treatment as the bezel. For reasons which remain unclear to me, this watch has much smaller luminous plots within the markers and hands than the original. Now this has been rectified on the newer Longines Skin Diver, which leads me to believe that it's because Longines at the time of creation in 2007 didn't have a luminous compound to match the colour of the aged paint on the rest of the dial, something which they now have. 
The result is a bright but quickly fading set of markers. Does this spoil the watch? Absolutely not, but is it an aspect which shows that the design is somewhat long in the tooth? I think so. An aspect of this watch which has been updated is the movement. Originally this watch used the ETA2824-2, a robust and widely serviced movement. For the newest generation, though, they've replaced this with two new calibers. For the new 36mm version of this watch, which should appeal to the smaller wristed, the calibre chosen is the Longines L592, which is a rebranded version of the ETA A20 L11. This is in turn developed from the ETA 2681, which is in essence a miniature version of the ETA 2824. The Longines calibre increases the power reserve to 40 hours, and reduces the dual count to 22 from 25. A more radical approach has been applied to the full-size variant in the form of the Longines L888, a derivative of the ETA 2824 with a reduced beat rate of 25,200 vibrations per hour to give a 64 hour power reserve. The result is as approachable as the automatic movement we're all used to, but with additional convenience for a new owner. On its new polished steel Milanese bracelet, or in black PVD, Longines really has worked to keep this design relevant. The bracelet is comfortable and has a unique deployment which is absolutely distinctive in design and execution, even if the links are held together with pins rather than screws. Of course, since 2007 or 2009 when the date variant was launched, a number of other brands have started to produce vintage designs from their histories. In the spirit of not simply comparing watches with similar specifications, but rather genuine competitors, this watch still blows the Oris Diver 65 out of the water in terms of specs and technology. Quite frankly, it's also better finished and has an awful lot more character in this reviewer's eyes. Its best match is the Zodiac Super Seawolf, which is a similar quality and also offers more than your average ETA movement. Even so, this Longines isn't like anything else on the market where design or build is concerned. Also, being a few hundred pounds less expensive than the newer alternatives with the same movement in the Longines range, it represents undeniable value. This watch is long in the tooth, less than ideal as a dive watch, and not particularly suited to most recent tastes. However, if you hold one in the hand and feel the quality as well as the design, you forget all about that and appreciate what a stunning piece it is. This Longines isn't for everyone, but for those who appreciate it, nothing else will do. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and thank you very much for watching. This is Armon from WatchChronicle.com, out.